Uh, thanks, Olivier, for the invitation. Um, it's, it's great to be here to be able to share uh, this data that we've got. Um, being the, for, the for botanist on tour, I always get um, given the nickname of the vampire, which is probably a little bit unjust, but I'm, um, as Olaf mentioned, we'll be looking at the haemoglobin mass and the blood gas data that we collected. So Walter briefly talked about this um, David and Goliath match um, against between Bolivia and Brazil in La Paz in 1993 and the shock result with two goals in the last two minutes of the game uh, that put Brazil out. So it's, I mean, if, if the um, game had been played in, um, in Brazil, you'd be a fool um, to, have, to have bet on Bolivia. But perhaps what we don't know is whether or not the, the result would have been different if um, the Brazilians had been able to come and acclimatise for a bit longer. So athletes from sea level were faced with a bit of a, a dilemma when they come in to play at altitude. Should they, should they come in early and acclimatise or should they fly in and fly out? And it's not known the time course of these adaptations um, fully. So as I said, some, some people opt for the fly in, fly out to sort of make, um, take an advantage of that physiological window that Walter um, mentioned before. And that's almost as if you can sneak in under the altitude um, and it won't even notice, you won't even notice. And there are still many teams um, today that, that do this strategy. And for a lot of scientists, we think that that's, you know, can't really understand, but a lot of people are um, still opting uh, for that. Or you can come and you can stay and train and, and acclimatise, but how long do you need? Um, and as we heard yesterday, with the busy schedules for football matches now, that's um, becoming quite difficult to fit in. Then we've also got the Bolivians. Um, and when they travel down to, to sea level, they often report that they have quite a hard time. But if we have a look at them in their home environment, they, prefer, um, they provide us with a, a reference um, for chronic chronic adaptation, um, not quite to the extent of the llamas and the geese or the ducks, um, but so they're, they're interesting um, for us. And when they descend to sea level, they also provide some information of what happens um, with changing um, oxygen availability in these um, players. And also we can see how quickly these adaptations or changes are averted once they go back up. So you've already seen this slide from Walter, um, so there was Obviously, um, a lot of stuff um, going on, a lot of different measures, but what we're focusing on um, today is just the, the haemoglobin mass and blood gas measures. So, as Walter Cook said, um, he, he arrived early to measure the Bolivians in their hometown of La Paz, so what the reference for chronic adaptation would be. And then um, we had the opportunity then to measure them again when they were at, um, after they'd spent six days at sea level and possibly to see whether or not we might see any neocytolysis with um, any destruction of red blood cells that you heard a bit from um, Rob Chapman yesterday. We measured the um, Australians when they arrived so that we could all use the same equipment and the same um, carbon di um, monoxide bottles and then after six days uh, everybody flew on the same flight um, up to La Paz. And what we um, uh, did here was within two hours of arrival, so directly before the game, which you'll notice there. So we, um, we designed the study so that we could look at this you know, fly and fly out strategy. So playing within um, three hours of arrival by the time you get down from the airport. Um, and we, we obviously couldn't do a haemoglobin mass measurement uh, there because that would have made the game even, even worse for the, for the young boys. Um, but we were able to do blood gases just to have a look at this physiological window. And then um, over the preceding 12 days um, to have a look at the um, adaptations over that time. So haemoglobin mass, of course, was measured um, by the two-minute optimised rebreathing method that Schmidt and um, Nicole Prommer developed. Um, Haemoglobin concentration um, from the HemoQ and then the blood gases using the ABL80 uh, from capillary uh, blood samples. 
So if we look at our, our results, um, first of all, we're going to look at the Bolivians uh, versus the Australians. So remember, the Bolivians are uh, measured here in, in the hometown of La Paz and the Australians um, not measured in, in Canberra but in their at an equivalent um, altitude uh, near sea level. So what you can see is that the um, Bolivians have a, so the Bolivians are in this uh, white sort of box and the black box is the um, Australian. So they have a higher haemoglobin mass, um, a higher haemoglobin concentration um, and a slightly less um, blood volume. Then when the Bolivians um, came down to sea level, so this is after um, six days, um, haemoglobin mass uh, didn't change, so we didn't observe um, any neocytosis. Um, haemoglobin concentration, however, did, and blood volume um, increased. So although we didn't directly measure it, we can um, infer or deduce that this um, decrease in haemoglobin concentration is um, from a plasma volume expansion. And you often um, hear some of the players complaining that they need bigger sized boots or um, that their feet have swollen. Um, and this might be related to the, all the various um, fluid shifts. So now we're having a look at um, the oxygen, the blood gas uh, data here. Um, so we've got um, saturation, PCO2, which can give us um, an indication of ventilation and arterial oxygen content. Uh, so in this time we've got the, the other way around, so the uh, Bolivians are in, in black and the Australians are in white. So saturation obviously going up um, as the uh, Bolivians go down to sea level. And um, an increase um, in uh, PCO2 indicating a decrease in, in ventilation. Um, but arterial oxygen content um, remains um, pretty similar. So then in uh, the first few hours and days, uh, so this um, point at day one, that's the one within uh, two hours of arrival, you can see as soon as um, they arrive, haemoglobin saturation and arterial oxygen content uh, decrease. But we've got a delayed um, response in um, PCO2, so a delayed ventilatory um, uh, response there. But then um, in the preceding hours it does um, start to decrease and as a result um, haemoglobin um, saturation, um, oxygen saturation um, is gradually starting to increase um, and as well as the arterial oxygen content. Now looking at the whole, whole picture, I didn't want to give it to you all too early. Um, so uh, PCO2, as you can see, the, the Bolivians, um, they're getting, getting back down um, to where, where they started, but it, it's not immediate. Um, so there has been a, um, that change from, um, in oxygen content doesn't just um, <coughs> flick a switch um, for these guys. And the response in the Australians is much more uh, delayed over the, the time. Oxy hemoglobin oxygen saturation, um, as you can see, the lowest point was on that for within those first few days. Um, but uh, within maybe four days, the Bolivians um, are back here. And I mean, of course, we don't have daily measures here, so you can't sit, pinpoint the exact day, um, but you can, can get an idea. Uh, and it's taking, it is taking a while for um, the Australians uh, to reach um, levels close, close to the Bolivians. What we've done here um, is we've plotted the um, PCO2 against the um, hemoglobin oxygen um, saturation. And you can see that there's an inverse uh, relationship. So um, <coughs> the less you breathe um, by the, so that's indicated by the higher PCO2 is increased as a decrease in ventilation. So um, the less you breathe, the less oxygen saturated um, you are. Um, and at an identical um, PCO2, the Hemoglobin oxygen saturation um, was higher in the Bolivians, um, and that's probably related to their chronic um, adaptation. And finally, the um, hemoglobin mass um, blood volume results. 
Uh, so we did start to see an increase after 12 days, um, even I guess at, um, at day seven um, in the um, Australians, um, but nowhere near the, the level um, that the Bolivians have, have adapted to. And the same in hemoglobin concentration um, and blood, blood volume um, starting to decrease. So we're also able to um, estimate the contribution of the different factors um, to total arterial oxygen content, which um, did increase um, in both, both groups. Um, and that 34%, um, so the majority, no, sorry, 34% attributed to um, hemoglobin and oxygen saturation, um, and a large majority um, to blood volume. But it would be interesting to see as we continue, um, if we continued our stay, you'd probably expect the hemoglobin mass contribution um, of that to increase. It was also um, interesting that the, he, um, <coughs> You can see there that the um, Australians have actually um, overcompensated um, their arterial oxygen um, content after 12 days. So we've looked at both short-term and long-term um, strategy. Um, the short-term ones happen in, in hours and days and revolve around um, changes in fluid shifts and ventilation and then also the long-term adaptations um, with the accelerated erythropoiesis and the increase in hemoglobin. So some of our conclusions um, to wrap it up, it appears that even the, the Bolivians um, who are high um, altitude residents, they, they do um, experience some acute changes to altered oxygen availability um, and they must reacclimatize when they come back. The stable acid-based status that um, we could see within the first two hours of arrival, um, that could indicate this physiological window that we've um, talked about, but it's unlikely to compensate for the, the big drop in um, hemoglobin oxygen saturation and arterial oxygen content that we observed in that time. And um, although short-term acclimatisation was sufficient, um, for them to overcompensate um, in some respects, um, it wasn't sufficient um, to reach the levels of the native Bolivians. So from that, um, we would suggest that um, longer acclimatisation periods um, would be preferable over a fly-in, fly-out strategy. And as you saw before, a cast of thousands um, to thank, um, as well as all of you for your attention. Thank you.